Hey everybody, it's Jason here from Kinda Cool, and it's been about a year since I did my game room tour, so I thought it high time to do another one. So this is the November 2021 update of my game room. And first of all, we'll start off with this little poster that my son put on the wall. I guess he got tired of me telling him to be quiet while I was filming something, so I came up one day and this was on the wall, on the door, and I just, I've left it up ever since. I thought it was kind of neat and uh, thought it was really, really cool. So anyway, opening the door, first thing you'll notice is that we're no longer in an office. We are in an actual traditional room, and this used to be my son's playroom. Uh, but as he kind of graduated out of toys, I thought it'd be time to kind of maybe put the game room together. So I kind of pan around the room a little bit here, and I'm just kind of giving you a quick idea on the aesthetic here. I was trying to go in for a kind of like a clean look, uh, you know, have, maybe have a lot of stuff, but not necessarily feel like you have a lot of stuff. I kind of get a little claustrophobic if I get you know, something on every inch of the wall all the way throughout the room. So I kind of wanted to keep it a little bit open and uh, kind of airy. And I think this accomplishes that pretty well. Nice clean look. Just pan around a little bit more. So really the transformation here, one of the big things that happened is we actually have two stands now. So if you saw my office tour, you noticed that I had this insignia kind of tempered glass entertainment center. And I found it on Craigslist for like 30 bucks. And I, I told my wife, hey, maybe we should move into the game room now. I said, but I, I really need to find another one of these to make it work. And lo and behold, I found another one on Craigslist. It was a little more expensive, but I bit the bullet because I wanted the aesthetic to work. But anyway, this is my modern setup. This is the modern side. This is, uh, it's got kind of your modern-ish type systems in it. Uh, again, this is the exact same TV stand as the one on the retro side. We'll talk about that in a second. Xbox One S, Nintendo Switch. Xbox One X, which is actually patched out to the other side of the system so we can play in unison. Uh, PS3, this is the backwards compatible 80 gig version, fully backwards compatible, and this is a PlayStation 4. So this is anytime you want to do any kind of modern games, these are all pretty much hooked up and ready to go at any given time. Obviously the Xbox One X is patched over here so my son and I can play games together. This is the retro setup, and this looks largely similar to what you would have seen in the original game tour, uh, game room tour, but made a couple small changes to it. So again, this is the Insignia Tempered Glass TV stand, which I really like. These can hold a CRT. They can hold a lot of weight. Uh, they attract dust like nobody's business, especially if you have a dog. But, but anyway, go over the consoles that are in here right now. TurboGrafx-16, Super Nintendo, Sega Genesis with Sega CD. I cannot fit the tower power in there, so I have to. if I want to put my 32X, i got to pull it out. Arcadeworks, Omega, Consolized MVS, Neo Geo System. And then lastly right now, I have the OG Xbox in here. I bumped the Nintendo for this one out, so... Recently picked that one up and having a lot of fun with that. And these are all running through the OSSC. Open Cisco. Ugh, gross dog sneeze there. Sorry about that. Open source scan converter. And they're going into now. I have actually a six port uh, passive SCART switch back here, which makes things a ton easier. I can just change systems at the touch of a button without having to fumble through cords, which really makes things helpful. That wasn't in the last video, so that is a big improvement from last time. Running some blazing lasers here. Switching over to the back corner now. This is new as well. So you didn't see this in the old setup, but now I've got a PVM CRT setup back here in the corner, which I really, really love. This is the 19-inch 20M2U from Sony, a TV stand from Craigslist for about 10 bucks, and in a PS2 mode right now, but I just picked up this SNES Junior. I'm testing it out and seeing how it works. I'm playing some Ninja Turtles Japanese version from uh, Play More Games hooked me up with this, and this isn't a just a shell, a shell swap that I did so I could play it on the US version. But anyway, I'm having a lot of fun playing on this PVM. I really love it. It does RGB, composite, component, and you'll see me playing on this quite a bit of time. Really like, really enjoy that. Uh, just scanning through over here. Same pictures that were in the office. These are from ThinkGeek. Uh, but going over the systems right now, and again, at any given time, this is JVCX. I'll switch these out for the retro console. This is a GameCube with Game Boy adapter. This is a Famicom, the Japanese Nintendo, with an HDMI mod, Capture's HDMI mod and Bluetooth controllers. RGB modded Atari 2600, which I'm actually doing a video on that right now, finishing up that to kind of go over uh, everything that, that happened with that mod. Sega Dreamcast, obviously. Nintendo 64, RGB modded. This is the Jungle Green version, fantastic. This is Nintendo. This is the standard front loader, but it's been RGB modded along with a couple other small mods. Atari Jaguar, completely stock. I almost lost this in a trade to my buddy Joel with a poor man's retro game room, but I'm, I'm glad I kept it around. Sega Saturn, this is with the Fenrir ODE installed in it. Neo Geo CD, this is modded to play only in English instead of Japanese. Neo Geo AES, this has the Unibios 4.0, an illuminated button, a couple other small things. This is, the, this is cool skeleton Japanese Sega Saturn, no mods, I just thought it was cool, I agreed with them. Neo Geo Arcade Stick, this is the original one that came with the unit, and this is the customized retro stockpile Neo Geo Arcade Stick Neo Stick that he makes and sells. 
Over here, this is a fighting stick. This is a uh, Sega Saturn fighting stick from o Ori, modded with Sonoma parts. This is another retro stockpile MB MBS themed Neo stick for the Neo Geo systems. And here I've set some random games. I try to keep my lookers out here in my showers, are ones that I just really like to, to kind of show off. And I'll change them out from time to time and kind of give it a different look and feel. Same thing with this side here. I'll kind of swap these things in and out. But I like to show off you know, some of the ones that are either my favorites, ones I really like to play, or uh, just some something that's, that looks cool. And I'll, again, this will be swapped in and out. Uh, they just go through the drawers randomly, kind of showing you guys what's up. Just random chords. And I've kind of gone through and organized these a little better than they were before. I mean... When you collect a lot of systems, you get a lot of chords and a lot of stuff. So, uh, random stuff here. This is some Super Nintendo games, X Xbox One games, cleaning kit. You know, just random things. I've got kind of pockets of games stashed everywhere. I don't obviously have the space. This is where my controllers. So, you know, it's getting a little bit unruly. I try to keep these in quadrants so you can kind of see there's a Turbo Graphics corner, a Saturn corner. I'm losing the theme a little bit here though because I've been busy, you know, swapping some stuff in and out. This is largely Nintendo based, but there are some other things in here as well. You can see, uh, obviously, there's a zapper and some Super Nintendo from Dog Bone controller. But yeah, I mean, these go pretty deep, but I can get to them in a few minutes if I need a controller. And unfortunately, I'm getting so many systems now, I'm having some spillover. So uh, you see the RGB modded NES right here, PS1. And that is a PC engine with a case replacement on it. But uh, there's some other stuff under, under the bubble wrap in there, which I think is Sega Genesis, some other things. Cord management, this is where my cords go. Not terribly different than how I had it before. Uh, just big hefty bags with Ziploc industrial strength, you know, bags that hold everything that's not a controller or a game. And, you know, you got your cords, you got your AC adapters, maybe memory cards, things like that. I'll go in there as well. Just miscellaneous stuff. Lastly, just another box full of just games. There's my 32X. Uh, there's a memory card for it. Looks like a Saturn. And, and yeah. So... Taking a step back, take a look at some of the stuff that's on the walls here. And this is my son's old play Minecraft where We played a lot of Minecraft here. He, he loved Minecraft. We're still doing it, but not as much. But uh, I thought that looked cool on the wall, and he agreed. So he spends a lot of time in here with me. This is a Sega, uh, obviously, uh, Sonic the Hedgehog running through a ring. This was picked up at Classic Game Fest. This is a guy named Richard Selig, and he signed the print for me here, which was pretty neat. I got some more from here in a second. These came from eBay. These are uh, acrylic, three-dimensional kind of uh, just... I guess okay, nameplates, I guess, and you can, I had a few of these customized for different systems. I might keep going with this theme. I kind of like this. I might do a PC Engine 1 or an NEC 1 or something here. And this is another Richard Selig. We're talking about this is Ryu and Ken. I thought this looked very cool. And he signed both of these prints. The only thing I would change here is I'd flip the color of the fireballs around because every now and then Ryu does, Ryu does throw the red one and not Ken, but hey, I didn't, I didn't make the picture and I still think it looks cool. So anyway, I try to go for this kind of artwork now. I'm trying to get more of these signed prints like this one right here. This was Priscilla Kim that did this one. And she signed this print as well. Super Mario Brothers 2 kind of live action. You saw that probably in the first video if you saw that one. Again, these are Think Geek canvases for original NES uh, cover art. And over here I just threw all my kind of wristbands and lanyards and things that I picked up from all sorts of gaming conventions over the years. And I wish I'd actually held on to more of these. I threw some really good looking ones away because I didn't know what to do with them. A Ghostbusters themed one and a I think I had a really cool Castlevania one for Retro Palooza, but anyway, can't get those back. But going forward, I'll I'll keep all the ones that I get from here on. So kind of kind of just neat to hang on to those, and I kind of like those. Kind of gives me a flashback to going and checking out those shows. But yeah, so kind of just take a step back and uh, kind of pan through the room again here and see how everything goes. But uh, I'm gonna show you guys here a night shot here, and then I'm gonna right now I've got all the chairs pulled out, so it looks a little empty. But I'm gonna pop the chairs that I'm currently using in right now and show you guys how that looks. And then I'll kind of flip over and do a, uh, a night shot for you too so you can see how everything looks when we're uh, kind of at night here. This is where I film, for. this is kind of my wall of credibility that I film in front of if you see me do my video sometimes, but it uh, works out pretty well. So here are the chairs I'm currently using, and they're very college dorm roomy, but they work out really well, they do the job. And I've tried some different ones, but I keep going back to these. I'm looking for, I'm always looking out for new chair ideas, so if anybody knows any good ones, let me know in the comments below, but for now, this is what I'm using. All right, so here's a shot at night. So you can see I've got the LED strips behind both of the TCL TVs here that give a pretty cool effect bouncing off the wall there. And kind of hit that Xbox sign and make them glow a little bit there. And there's the OSC lit up. And the PBM corner, CRT corner here. And then I've got my dome lights lit up here and the cabinets here to kind of show off the red and blue. And I can change the colors on those as well, but, but yeah, so this is kind of how it looks at night when we're in here and my son is kind of 
going to town actually on some Minecraft right now. And you can see they still got the Turbo Graphics going on the other side, but that's it for now, guys. So thanks for watching.